Hey there, it's Robin LaPree. I'm here to talk about backpacking Costa Rica in 10 days with just a 45 liter backpacking backpack and a day pack. So it's actually quite easy to be a minimalist packer as long as you're prepared for the 15 microclimates in Costa Rica. And I got to experience a bit of all of them because I flew into San Jose, which is the capital, and then I headed over to La Fortuna Adonal, which is in the volcanoes, and then took a jeep boat jeep to the mountains to Monte Verde, which is 1600 meters, so quite cool and very windy, and then headed back down to the west coast to Manuel Antonio, uh, right by the national park. So I'll kind of step by step each place and the weather I experienced and then the things that came in handy. So I obviously like traveling with a little fun pouch for all my essentials, my passport, my electronics, any paperwork you might need, reservations, it's key and uh, also super fun. Um, and then also money is really important. Um, colones are the uh, currency of Costa Rica, but you can also use American dollars. But a lot when you pay with cash, you get colones back. So you can kind of split between the two, but depending on if you travel elsewhere, it might just be worth it to stick with your American, and then if you don't spend it all, then you can save it for your next trip. So uh, the first things first, because it can be quite rainy, a shell is so essential. They're really lightweight, they breathe, so they're not going to be too hot, and it saved my life many times to make sure that, you know, I'm river paddling, and it's pouring because it's the rainforest, it rains, even in the dry season, it can still kind of be on the cusp of sometimes a little sprinkle, but you don't want to be caught off guard. And then also to accommodate the water and all the hiking that I wanted to do, I got a really great waterproof hiking boot. Uh, it has Gore-Tex, so it again allows your skin to breathe, but then you're really comfortable and the support is everything because if you're hiking for hours in the forest, you want to be prepared and comfortable so you can actually enjoy what you're seeing. Um, and then just for layering, in case uh, I arrived sick, so it was really unfortunate when I got there, but the hot springs were the best way to relax. So, of course, you want to bring a swimsuit. Um, you can bring a bikini, whatever you like. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, depending where you go, uh, some of the material, like the rocks and stuff, might ruin your swimsuit a bit, so maybe don't bring your favorite one. Uh, and then, because you're quite close to the equator compared to where I live in Canada, I always have a swim t-shirt so I can stay in the sun even during peak times and not feel like I have to worry about burning because it definitely happens because you're sweating so much all the sunscreen just keeps coming off unless you keep reapplying and covering up. Uh, and then obviously you want to bring a pair of shorts. I literally brought uh, this pair of shorts and then I brought two other uh, athletic fabric ones that were high waisted so they looked cute but they were actually just super functional. Uh, for other bottoms, I brought a pair of cotton lightweight pants. I actually brought them also in case for pajamas because if you stay in places with air conditioning, sometimes it can actually be quite cool uh, and chill you a bit if you wanted to actually dry out your stuff. The other key is because things take so long to dry, sometimes bring extras of whatever you want to wear. So maybe two swimsuits at least. Extra underwear because again, it takes long to dry if you're washing. Uh, like I washed in the sink and I hung it to dry, it took a couple days. And then I brought one pair of jeans that I actually wore on the plane because I left in December in Canada. And the only time I actually needed them was when I was in Monte Verde because we arrived, it's a between 17 to 22 degrees, but really windy. So if you're in the shade, if you're in the forest, it can be cooler. But I always like being comfortable. I don't want to have to rush back uh, and change or feel like, oh, I want to go home back to the hotel or the hostel or wherever you're staying just because I'm uncomfortable. Um, and then as for layers in Monte Verde, I just brought a really thin, lightweight merino wool sweater, which is great because it breathes really well, allows your body to stay warm and or cool and antimicrobial so it doesn't get too smelly, especially because if you're not doing laundry and they take days to wash, uh, if you're wearing it multiple times, you I mean, I don't want to smell. Um, and then again, another layer, uh, a sweater. I wore this on the airplane, which was actually freezing cold on the way there. <laughs> I even wore my hat on the way to the airplane uh, because I was freezing. Uh, and then the only time I busted these out was at night in Monte Verde. Um, otherwise, it was quite warm. And then uh, obviously, just bring a sports bra. 
I mean, I like being comfy so I can hike and sweat and not feel uncomfortable, but if not, I'm super into bralettes, so these are really lightweight, comfy, they'll dry quick in the sun, um, and yeah, just really fun and easy to throw in because they don't take up much room, you don't have to worry about the shape, uh, really great for stepping in a backpack. And then, I only brought a couple shirts. Um, I brought just a simple t-shirt, but with a little bit of a longer sleeve, again, to cover my arms when it's really hot and you're just hiking and you really don't want to reapply sunscreen. And then, I wanted to have some cute things, so if I was going out for dinner, or we did go out to a nightclub one in the night, something cute that you can wear. That's why I brought the high-waisted uh, athletic shorts, because you tuck them in and it actually looks like it's a cute summer outfit, not <laughs> a utility one. Um, and then, again, I wanted to be fun with the ocean, so I brought another t-shirt relaxed so I could tuck it in, or I could do a little knot if I wanted to, and then you really don't want fitted things when you're there because it's so warm and humid, you want your skin to breathe and feel like there's some movement, otherwise it's just going to stick to you. Uh, and then I brought two other shirts that, again, I wore as PJs, but I kind of brought them. So they'd be fun options if somehow I stained my clothes too badly to wear them again, or if they just didn't dry. So you can switch in some fun things that work for PJs, beach, every day, whatever you want. And then, obviously, uh, socks, uh, cotton socks for just, you know, beach, town walking. Um, but most of the time, I wore my sandals. Uh, unfortunately, I have to wear orthotics, so I have to do the not-so-cute but really comfy sandals. And then I also wore my sneakers to the trip to San Jose, so then those are really comfortable, really easy to do. And then when you're hiking, merino wool socks are awesome. Again, they have extra cushion, they allow your feet to breathe, they really work well with any kind of waterproofing in your shoe. Uh, and I brought two pairs of those because, again, really comfy, they keep your feet dry, especially when you're hiking in the heat and it's hot. Uh, and then antimicrobial again, so it's not going to be too much. But anyway, I'm going to put a link below for the link to the blog that has the full packing checklist because there's lots of things I didn't show you and didn't talk about and electronics and all that toiletries and that kind of stuff. So. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I will be posting sometime soon. Thanks. Pura vida.